All right, improper integrals. So there are a few things we need to worry about with improper integrals. <clears throat> what they are, there's two types. So the first type is either going to be negative infinity to some number or some number to positive infinity or the worst case scenario, minus infinity to positive infinity. So that's the first type. Your your interval that you're integrating across is infinitely big. So that's the first type. The second type is you're going to, your interval is going to contain a vertical asymptote. So I wrote examples for type one, but I can summarize all these. Your interval, whoa, interval is uh, infinitely wide. All right, so of those two types, Let's start out with uh, some examples on the first type. The way you're going to deal with all these. Yep. So you integrate these carefully with limits. So we'll do our first example. All right, <clears throat> this function has a vertical asymptote. Where is the vertical asymptote? So our function is one over x squared. Where's the vertical asymptote? X equals what number? Zero, right? So when you be divided by zero, is zero in the interval? So I'm going to write down our interval. Interval is one to infinity. Is zero inside this interval? Nope. So our interval is infinitely wide. However, there is no vertical asymptote where we are integrating. So any questions on that idea? There is a vertical asymptote, but it's not where we're going to be integrating. All right, so all we're dealing with is a type one. So we have an, our interval is infinitely wide. So the way you deal with these, so I'll switch marker colors. So we're gonna <coughs> take out infinity and I'm going to use a variable B and now lim B approaches infinity. So the way you deal with it is you take out that infinity you put a variable in its place, and then you take the limit as that variable goes to infinity. So any questions about that, that change right there? I just took out infinity, and I put in a variable that's going to go to infinity. So the last thing that I do in terms of order of operations, I'm going to completely evaluate the integral and the last thing I'm going to do is apply this limit to it. So you're going to compute integral first. All right, this integral you can handle no problem. I'm going to solve or you're going to solve the integral over here on the right side, so go ahead and do that. Don't worry about the limit, just leave the limit off. We'll bring this back, once we integrate it, we'll bring it back and write down the antiderivative right there. So just compute the integral.
Could be the integral right now. Don't mess up adding 1 to your power. As long as it's the same thing. Uh, yeah, I think that would be the same thing. All right, so any questions on that antiderivative? Should be too much going on. Picked an easy first problem. All right, <clears throat> so take this limit. This limit should be relatively easy, too. It's been a little while since we did limits, but not that long. We did them in L'Hopital's rule. So that 1 over b, when b is really big, that's really small. So it's going to go to 0. Yep. So it'll be a negative, basically it's negative 1 over infinity, but that's negative 0 or 0. All right, so there's your first improper integral finished right there. If there was a positive, it would have been positive infinity plus 1, which is just infinity. You mean if, if it would have been, uh, yeah. Uh, that would have just been positive 0 down there. Okay. Would have been the same thing. Yeah, that infinity right there was the reason this was improper. Wait, so this question, so our integral from 1 to infinity of that thing is 1. Yep. So that means you have an area that's infinitely wide, yet its area is 1. <laughs> so what does that mean? I can draw it out. It's easy to graph 1 over x squared, right? Yeah. Let's go ahead and graph it. Let's get crazy and graph from 0 to infinity. We'll graph the entire uh, 0 to infinity. It pretty much looks like that. It's got a vertical asymptote at 0. All right, we started at 1 right there. So we computed all this area. And that entire area added up to 1 even though it goes on forever. So what that means is it gets really, really skinny really quickly. I didn't draw it that accurately. But it still keeps going. Yes. It won't stop, can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> so it should seem weird that an infinitely wide thing has a finite area. Yeah. The real mind-blowing thing. So the really crazy thing, this is a little bit mind-boggling. <clears throat> There's what's called a space-filling curve. And you can write down curves that, a one-dimensional curve that actually has an area. Is that kind of like the Sanders theorem like you taught us last week, or last quarter, or spring quarter? Sandwich theorem is if you have a limit that doesn't really settle down clearly to one value. So you, if you can sandwich it between or squeeze it between two functions that do settle down, then you can say this one has to be between the other two. So sandwich theorem may come into play on a limit or two, but probably not in here. Uh, there's a very quite a few opportunities for L'Hopital's rule at the end of these problems. Obviously, you have an infinite limit. Anytime you have an infinite limit, L'Hopital could be lurking in the background waiting for you. <laughs> you think you're done, and all of a sudden, you get infinity over infinity. Well, you're lucky if you get infinity over infinity. What you don't want to see is uh, something weirder like infinity minus infinity or 
one to the zero, zero to the one, all the, those are the more annoying forms. If any over infinity is relatively painless when it comes to uh, un indeterminate forms. All right, let's get crazy and go the exact same problem, but we're gonna go zero to infinity. <laughs> yeah, actually, I believe, no, but I think it's, it may be actually. Depends on the symmetry. I see what you're saying because yeah. there's that. Yeah. The only question is, that's definitely one. Yeah. The only question is, is this area the same as that? I think it's close, but we'll find out really quick. <laughs> All right, let's be smart. We know that the integral from 1 to infinity, 1 over x squared dx equals 1. How can I use this information to make my life a little easier? So let's go 0 to 1 and then 1 to infinity. So I don't have to recompute this part right here. So that's calculus 2 rule right there. Hopefully you remember that rule. You can just split up your interval, basically, at any midpoint. The one that made sense was 1 because we computed that guy already. <clears throat> All right, so the last one's plus 1. Now you can say obviously because it's obvious. Um, what we're going to do with the other one, 1 over x squared, even though our endpoints are fine, 0 and 1 is fine, we do have an issue because we have a vertical asymptote happening at 0. So this endpoint 0 looks OK, except that's exactly where a vertical asymptote is happening. So we have to treat this 0 very carefully. So the way we handle that is just like what we did before. We're going to use a limit. I'll use the same letter, b approaches 0, from b to 1. Does it matter if you have the b from like 1 to b because b is just a variable, so it could be any number? Well, b is a variable. It's not any number. It's, it's uh, approaching 0. So it's a number close to 0 getting closer. Okay. Uh, so it, it would be incorrect to think of b as something bigger than 1, because in the limit, it's going to be very close to 0. Okay. And if I did switch these two, what would happen to my inner integral? Become, become negative. So if I did swap them, I could. It would just become negative. So don't forget about all the other calculus rules that I've shown you as well. Now, should b approach 0 from both sides? Let's think about 0. What side should b approach 0 from? From the right side. That's important. So it's coming from positive land. So b is approaching 0, but it's approaching from positive land or from the right side. So hopefully you remember negative land and positive land. So negative land from the left, positive land from the right. All of these limits, whenever you have vertical asymptote, you're going to have to approach on one side, depending on, you have to think what side are you approaching on given your interval, or your integral. No, interval. Given your interval, what side should you be approaching? All right, so go ahead and compute this out. It's the same, antiderivative is the same, that's not hard, but be careful with your limit now.
we'll be plugging the top endpoint first. So that's that negative one over one right there, minus the negative one over B. No, I just simplified and without writing it down. What you do like the I guess it's like the it's like top minus the bottom. Yeah. Or, okay, so it's like that. Yeah, yeah. Like the, the top value in for x and then just try to come from the, the bottom. And then you put P in that. Right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was looking for. Yeah. Oh, could you have put that little detail? Yeah, that's what I was All right, what in the world's one over a positive, tiny positive number? Infinity. That's infinity, positive or negative? Positive. Positive. That's why it matters what side we're approaching zero on. So if I was approaching zero from negative land, this would have been negative infinity. But we're approaching positive land, so it's negative one plus positive infinity, which of course is positive infinity. All right, whenever you get infinity or negative infinity, we say that this is not integrable or not able to be integrated. So if you get infin infinite amount of area, you say that it's not able to be integrated. And that would be the answer? Not yeah, on web work, I think it would be, does not exist, would be some of the answers on there. Uh, the plus C is for an uh, indefinite integral if there's no endpoints. That's where you get that plus C. And C is always going to be a finite number. It'll never be infinity or negative infinity. Well, so what we just found out, the areas aren't the same, so it doesn't have the symmetry that we thought it was going to have. Because how could one of those areas be one and the other one's infinity? Those are very different amounts. So this does not have the symmetry that it looks like that my graph maybe led you to believe. So you lied. So you lied. No, I just can't. <laughs> well, you assumed. And you assumed I could draw. So between one and infinity, there's, infin there's a one area. But between a very small zero and one, there's infinite? Yes. <laughs> How, well, how tall is this? How tall is this area? Well, how far is that going to the right? I mean, the in between zero and one, the each x value is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. But then we have one, two, oh, infinity. Oh, so there's one very, very big. Yeah. yeah. Okay, that makes sense. So it's, they both have an infinite dimension. It's just the zero to one area, infinite dimension goes upwards. And the idea is it doesn't get skinny quickly enough mm. to be finite. It's, it's basically too, too wide. It doesn't get, uh, it doesn't taper off quickly enough. Well, you're saying it has to get skinny quick enough before, like, I don't know. Yep, and the way we detect that is by integrating it. Now, on that one that we figured out was one on the last one from one to infinity, is the area actually one or is it like infinitely close to one? It's one. It's one. Uh, there's no approximate, there's no less than or equals going on above. So it was exactly one. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Just accept it. I don't know. Yeah, I hate that. I hate that. So, so here's, what, here's what's going on that we can't understand as humans. C can you, could you cut this shape out of paper or out of any material? So first of all, there's no material that's that long, right? It needs to be infinitely long. So right there, we can't imagine that. It also, the other issue is it's getting arbitrarily narrow. So at some point, it would be thinner than one molecule or whatever amount, you know, whatever unit you could go down to. I don't know, maybe you could go down to like a quirk or some other nerdy physics thing. But I don't think you could just make a chain of quirks. And even if you did, they still have a radius on them. And so at some point, it'd need to be thinner than any of those particles. Well, like, um, <laughs> or quantum. But the point is, it's, uh, at some point, you're going to run out of material to build this with. 
Not to mention the fact that it's infinitely long, you already have no shot at it. So you cannot imagine this object is the real problem, and you're trying to. What if you're taking a, a dy integral of the function of y? You could take a dy integral, would you swap? would solve this for y, uh, for x, and you could rewrite it as a y would integral. Would it be swapped where the, the, uh, the x-axis would then be kind of the up and down in that sense? So would that be the infinite in the other way? Be? So I think we use. Essentially, I guess, yeah. So I mean, you're comparing two different things, but like the same. No, that's not right. Whoa, that's the worst algebra I've done all day. <laughs> so we got x squared y equals 1. Now I'm solving for x. So that would be the function of y you would be using right there. And then you would go like, yeah, 0 to infinity. You're going up the y axis. Right, so would that then be the, the one and the, the... You should still get the same amount of areas, basically. Okay. Except now the one, this one area down here would go with, would go with this piece down here. Okay. So that would, that would be the... You would, that, that area would now be two. Okay. And the leftover piece would be the infinity. Okay. Is this due to the symmetry or the lack of symmetry? So there is no symmetry in this graph that you're thinking of. Yeah, we, we just assumed that there was. Yeah. So if it was symmetric, <clears throat> there is a nice easy graph that has that symmetry that you were hoping for, which is this. And now if I solve for x, it's really easy to do. This function is, does have that y equals x symmetry, or you could think it's its own inverse. This function has that symmetry that you were thinking of. But back to the original like, equation, not about the, the graph or anything. So we broke it up into two different integrals. Would we carry down that other one that we already had? Oh, yeah, right. So <clears throat> it would be like negative 1 plus infinity plus 1. But they all so we didn't, we didn't really finish this problem. Right. We got the first area was basically infinity plus 1 was infinity. But it's still infinity but yeah. So the point is, it's gonna, if any one of the pieces is infinite, the whole thing is not integrable, or, or does not exist. Yeah, so I just forgot that plus one. I think there was a minus one somewhere else. But again, when you're dealing with infinity, I don't care if you're going to add 100 to it, or even a million, it's still going to be infinity. So there's probably a negative one I didn't put in here somewhere, but that doesn't matter either. Okay, so there's another improper integral. All right, so there is another rule with improper integrals. You can only have one limit per integral. So I'll write down what you're not allowed to do. This is what you will be tempted to do, is take out both your endpoints at the same time. So this right here is way more difficult than you think. And one of the issues with limits, they're not commutative. So I can't just swap the two. So taking two limits is actually way more difficult than anything you want to do, even all the way through Calc 4. So we're not going to ever take two limits in a row. So forget that. Not a good choice. How c I do need to have two limits, but I can't attach them to the same integral. So what are some ideas? Split it at zero or one. So we're going to split it up at an x value. Doesn't matter what x value I choose. Let's think about vertical asymptotes. Any vertical asymptotes for this 1 over 1 plus x squared function? Nope. I chose this function because I want to eliminate. I want, didn't want to have vertical asymptotes. So I don't have vertical asymptotes here. If it was 1 over 1 minus x squared, that's a different story. But I didn't want to deal with that right here. All right, so what's a good x value to split it on? Zero. So there's no vertical asymptote. If there was vertical asymptote, I'd have to be careful and split it around that as well. Let's go, go 0. 1 would be OK, but when, in, when you can use 0, go with 0.
So that's just a calc one move right there, splitting it at zero. You're just splitting your interval on any number inside of it. We just went with zero. I could have split it at 42, or pi, or square root 17, doesn't matter. But remember, you're going to be plugging this in at the end, so you want to split it on a number that's nice. All right, now we're ready to apply both of those limits in here. So I'll switch to blue for this. So I'll just use an A for the first negative infinity endpoint. So we're going from A to 0. Plus lim will go B on this to positive infinity, 0 to B. This should be a very familiar antiderivative. What is the antiderivative of 1 over 1 plus x squared? It is a trig. Which trig or inverse trig or inverse hyperbolic trig? This is tan inverse. It's probably on your paper. I'm sure it's on your paper, or it better be. All right, so go ahead, take these antiderivatives, and finish this off. The limits might be tricky, but think about the inverse tangent function, what the graph looks like, and what your limit is. Your last step's probably the most tricky. So I'll give you about two minutes to finish this. The limit part's going to be the most difficult at the end. I only did one part of it. I didn't, I didn't do much. Any questions? Good time to ask.
Yeah, it looked kind of like an elongated S. Tan over zero is zero, so technically they're both zero already. But they, if if it wasn't zero, they would cancel each other out. Because you have tan inverse zero. Remember, tan inverse zero doesn't depend on a. So the second one is minus tan inverse zero. So add them together, you get zero. A positive and a negative. Oh, so they would have been both the same numbers, but you're saying. Yeah, if they, if they were like pi over 6 or whatever, okay. they still would can't. So, for example, if I broke this up at like pi over 2 for some reason, they would still cancel out. All right, so I saw a lot of you get to this point right here. <clears throat> so I'm going to draw one period of t tangent graph really quickly. All right, so there's one period of tangent. Now to invert, you're going to swap x and y. So if you have a good visual artistic way of thinking, you can just basically reflect across the y equals x line. So I'll draw a tangent inverse here. So there's tan inverse. All right, so all I did was I swapped the xy axis on the tangent graph. All right, once you see this graph, what happens to tangent inverse if you go all the way to the left? Negative pi over 2. So if I keep going left, 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 I get closer and closer to negative pi over 2. So this is minus negative pi over 2. And if I keep going to the right, I get regular pi over 2, so it's plus pi over 2, add those together, you get regular pi. So that infinite amount of area is pi. So we don't have enough time to do another problem, but we have enough time to graph. <coughs> 